everybody are sorry that we're actually a bit late this morning. We are getting everything set up, but also uh, we had a rain shower suddenly come. But if you've just tuned in, we're having Good News Christian Church in the, in the car park, live in the car park. If you want to come down, we're here in Little Island. We're just going to another two minutes, three minutes, and we're going to kick off. But there's a number of people here already. The car park is getting full. So if you want to come down, uh, we're live, okay, on Facebook, and we're live on YouTube. But if you want to come down and experience live worship, you've been locked up for so long, you're more than welcome. Now, it's in the car. You have to stay in your car, or at least beside your car, because we're having social distancing. So please feel free to come down and enjoy the live worship. I'll be back with you in a second as we get set up. YouTube and Facebook. Guys, we're going to go live on Facebook on YouTube, and uh, we're live there, but we're also still getting set up. So, and we had a little rain shower there that kind of slowed us up a little bit. But hey, it's great to see you this morning. Church in the car park. Can I have a beep? Can I have an amen? Beep beep.
actually start out uh, let's the load on my soul once it's like Is it in C? C yeah. Yep, that's right. C, F. Again, guys, sorry for the delay. We had a little rain shower that kind of stopped us from being able to uh, go online with G. But I hope you're being blessed right now. We're going to kick off very soon. So thank you for staying tuned with us. Try not let everything blow away on us. tuned in on Facebook those of you who've tuned on YouTube welcome to Car Park Church we just right now in your sitting room right now in your kitchen right now wherever you are just take a moment to right now and just bless the Lord just bless the Lord all your with all your soul and, and count the blessings of God count the blessings of God who heals you who sets you free delivers you from your diseases forgives you of your sins bless the Lord who wants to be with you who cares for you bless the Lord who makes you overcome adversity Bless the Lord right now. Bless his holy name. Bless the name of God. Bless the name of Yahweh. Yahweh Jireh, our provider. Yahweh Rapha, our healer. Bless the Lord, all your soul. Bless him right now. 
count your blessings right now and just praise and praise and have a minute of praise pray in tongues right now whatever you want to do just praise him right now lift up the name of jesus come on lift up the name of jesus here. So can I have a beep and praise the Lord together? <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. probably the practice of changing the speakers. Yeah. Uh, get tape there. Yeah, up. One, two. Dead. 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 One, two. Something, something, something. Go back, go back into the back ones. One, two. Dead. Dead. One, two. Bring it, bring it back to the bottom. Ones. Bring it back to the bottom. It's done dead. Bring it back to the bottom. Ones.
One more time. We not giving up. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. We have to keep social distancing. But those of you who can, would you just stand outside beside your cars, raise up your hands up to heaven. Those of you who can, just stand beside your car right now, raise up your hands up to heaven, and welcome Jesus right now. We welcome Jesus. And one more time, we bless the Lord. Welcome King Jesus over the church. Welcome King Jesus over your family. Welcome King Jesus into your life and into your heart. In Jesus' name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Jesus in this place. I want a hallelujah. I want a beep of the horn. I want to hear hallelujah for somebody. Yeah, come on. Who wants not to 
Facebook, as I said, or you're tuned in, and I'm the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and He will be forever and ever. And He's the Lord over viruses, He's the Lord over our sicknesses, He's the Lord over our diseases. Jesus is truly sitting. Up. How many of you know today's Father's Day? Can I have a yes? You know, I'm so glad that our Father, when we were prodigal children, we were prodigal sons, and we we're living in the mud and the mire, when we we're living in slavery. When we're living in that kind of slavery of all different things, I'm so glad that the Father kept looking out for us. The Father kept on looking out for us because He cares for us. Even when we've gone away from our proper thinking and proper senses. But the Father cares for us so much so that He sent His Son Jesus. Anything that the devil would try and put on us. The curse has been broken. Jesus paid the curse for us. Yep, no slip, no slips to fit, no longer slips to fit. This is for you, John, wherever John is. Is John, Sean, is John in the car with you there? He's over there, so where's John? No, not John Edwards, John, the other John, John from Dublin. Ah, there you are. This is for you, John.
child of God. Let's sing it again. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Declare it out one more time. I'm no longer Praise to your Father in heaven who set you free. You're a child of God. You're a child of God. Come here right now. I know we find it a little bit strange and a little bit different, but we're so glad that you've come here this morning and just praise God together in the car park and just worship God. But right now, if there's something you want to give thanks to God for, and please on Facebook as well and on YouTube, Sam is going to tell me there. If you're on one of them anyway, Sam is going to be able to tell me on Facebook, on YouTube. If you want to declare out something to God right now, thankful to your Father right now in heaven, would you just shout it out as loud as you can so we can hear you and say amen to it? Anybody want to shout out? Come on. Amen, amen. For those of you who didn't hear, uh, Michael, Mike, amen. Michael was just saying how he's th thankful that God is opening doors for evangelism, particularly bringing the gospel to his father and bringing the good news to his father and bringing it into his father's life. And amen. We bless you, Michael. Evangelist Michael, believe you me, he is absolutely. Anybody else wants to praise God, just shout it out very clearly. Ann Webster, Ann Webster just wants to thank the Lord for being able to gather together. May, we, may all the churches be open soon, amen? amen? As you know, and if they can't open, if they have some problems with social distancing or small buildings, may they find by God's great creative ways, creative ways to gather the people together that they may worship him. Jesus is building his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Amen? Amen. No coronavirus. Even the laws of the land. We want to obey the laws of the land. We want to go well with the laws of the land. But I want to tell you, God is a flood and he, he floods over the walls of the laws of the land. We don't have to break the laws down but God will flood over. He'll find the way that we can gather that his people will be let go to worship him. And Ann Webster wants to give thanks that we can gather here. Welcome to Goodness Christian Church, Car Park Church. If you're a pastor or if you belong to another church, consider doing Car Park Church yourself, wherever you are. If you want to find out how we're setting up the gear, getting everything going, text me, email me, and I'll tell you how we're doing it. James, James on online, I don't know where he's on Facebook or YouTube, he turns around and he says, I want to thank God for God in my life, and you come up here, Sam, because I'm... Oliver Nicholson wants to thank God for his new life in Christ. Amen. 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 Go on, John. Amen. 
John wanted the team down from Dublin. He wanted to give thanks to God for the anointing oil, like the Good Samaritan who came and helped the people who were downtrodden. The anointed oil that will lift up the downtrodden, the broken heart of the homeless, the drug addiction, whatever they've got in their life. And he wants to also thank God for ministries that do that, such as John Edwards Walking Free Ministry that is going throughout Ireland. And he's going to talk a little bit later on today. Going throughout Ireland looking for that one who's robbed and stolen on the side of the road and then bringing the anointing oil of Jesus into their life that sets them free. Go on, Sam. LaDonna wants to thank God that his son got tested for, I take a coronavirus, got tested for coronavirus and it's negative. So those of you on YouTube and those of you on Facebook, you might be saying, seeing things coming down the line there. You know, say amen to somebody else if they've said something down the line on the list there and just say thank God for them and bless them. Anybody else before we go on? Go on, Noreen. Welcome, Noreen just wants to thank God for the church and for the ministries in the church. Amen. I don't know if you heard that, but Chris was just wanting to thank God that he's getting closer to his father and also seeing his father in new light, that his father is the spiritual leader in the household who wanted to come to church and worship God rather than be focused on Father's Day. And some of the family was late because they were kind of getting focused in on Father's Day. And he said, no, be focused on your father in heaven. Amen and amen and amen. Come here. With that, I will... Come up, come up to the next time because... Dolly Kate wants to thank God for setting her free from spiritual bondage and deliverance from drugs, alcohol and an eating disorder. And Jamie White would like to thank God for the people who, who I care and love the most and for everything he did for me and helped me in my path towards the Lord and helped me seek greatness. Amen and amen. Can you say amen to all those on Facebook and all those on YouTube, church? Amen. 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 Come here, with that I want to say something. I want to give thanks to God for my father. Yes, you know, if any of you heard my testimony down through the years, or if you heard my testimony yesterday, you've heard the way that I had murderous thoughts for my father and different things. And I had a, not a good relationship growing up with my father. But I want to thank God for my father and I want to honor my father. Uh, even though there was many difficulties, I want to tell you, God has done the work in my heart where I, uh, he's passed away now. But I'm so thankful that we restored our relationship before he passed away. He still drove me nuts, but even besides that, he was my father, and I, I, you know, I've come to not only forgive him but love him. And I, you know, I didn't get a chance. You know, when you're doing a testimony, you don't get a chance to do, give everything. So, any any of you have ever heard my testimony? But I, you know, one thing my father did one time, and it was a fatherly thing he did. It's one of the best things he ever did for my life. Uh, I was nearly sent away to St. Pat's uh, about three times. And the last time, that was it. I was being sent away. I was 14 years of age, and my mother said to my father, you've got to do something here or your son is gone. Uh, something, I can't remember all the details. Anyway, my father, had, I don't remember my father ever doing much for me, if anything. I honestly don't. But there's one thing he did. On this occasion, he went into the office by himself. I was with him. And um, it was on Patrick's Hill, would you believe? It was on Patrick's Hill in Waterford. Uh, somewhere there and he went into the office and he said you stay outside here at the time I didn't even understand the, the depth of it you know I was kind of like I don't care I don't care you know this kind of attitude but my father went into the office and about a half an hour later he came out smiling and he just simply said that's all sorted that's all he said that's all sorted I don't know exactly what he said or what he did but when I found out later that when he was in the office the chap, he knew the chap who was actually the, I don't know what, the education officer or whatever it is. He knew him because he, years ago he had gone out with his sister. He used to go out with the sister, so he knew the family. And I don't know what went on, 
or my father said something, done something, and I, in the end, anyway, I didn't get sent away. And I thank God for that because that could have, that could have really detrimented, that could have done a lot of damage to my life. I mightn't be here now, you know, I know God's grace and so forth, but that could have done a lot of damage to my life in ways. I was just, you know, talking over the weekend to somebody who was in one of those industrial schools and stuff, and I could have done a lot of damage. So I thank God for my father. I don't know what relationship you've had with your father. I don't know if you're as bad as mine with hatred and so forth. I don't know whether you had a really good relationship with your father, but right now, can you do everything you can in your heart to thank your father? And I'll tell you why. Because it's one of the commands of God. In the Ten Commandments it says, honor your parents. We don't hear enough of that preached in churches. It says, honor your parents. Honor your father and mother. And so right now, I don't know what your father and mother may or may not have done. Don't worry about the small share. It's only a small one, guys. I don't know what your father, whether he's been good or bad or whatever. Honor your parents right now by blessing them. Forgiving them. There's no perfect parents. Forgive them. Honor them right now. Love them. Forgive them. And it says in scripture, if you honor your father and mother, it says you will, in scripture it says, that you may live long in the land. Some of you need to get spiritually free by blessing your physical father. If you bless your father, no matter what, it will help you to live long in the land. That's a spiritual dynamic. So right now, I want to tell you, God wants to free you right now. God wants to free you more. So even if you have a good relationship with your father right now, would you just praise God for your father right now? Go on. Praise God for your father. Bless your father right now. Find something you can remember. Let God remember something in character in your father. Maybe you haven't got a good relationship, but find something. Let God highlight something in your heart by which you can thank God for them. It could be even simple and simple as he once smiled at you. I don't know what it is. It could be just he smiled at you once or he said something nice once. Just bless him right now. Just bless him. I also want to thank God for my spiritual father. He's passed away, Al Ryan. When I came to Christ at first, he, you know, says, Paul turns around and he says, you have many, there's many leaders, there's many things, but you don't have many spiritual fathers. And Paul turns around to his, his disciples and says that. And my spiritual father, Al Ryan, he was a, he was a, a, a leader among men. He was, he was on the war council and different stuff. He was very much in the IRA before he came to Christ and he had a great leadership quality about him. And I thank God he took me under his wing. And he showed me love. So right now, it mightn't be here. Your father mightn't be here. It might be somebody in your past. It might be even someone in your future. But right now, and there's many, sorry, sadly to say, spiritual orphans as well. Right now, if there's someone in your life that you know, maybe it was when you became a Christian at first. Maybe it was when you became a Christian at first. Or maybe it was somebody who discipled you. Would you right now just thank God for your spiritual fathers right now and your spiritual mothers? It might have been a woman. It's okay. God is, you know, it might be a woman who did it, but right now, would you just thank God for that? Just do that right now. Come on. in the mountain face. Those of you on YouTube, those of you on Facebook right now, please, would you just say something good about your father or thank your father in heaven, thank your, your spiritual fathers, thank your physical fathers, that it may go well with you in the land. Would you just not right now praise, the, praise your father in heaven?
statements of God's love. His love is everlasting. His love endures forever. you lord god your love endures forever and ever and ever may the love of god that is shed abroad in your heart the love that is love that is peace and patience and kindness and goodness the love that really flows through may that flow through your heart onto everyone around you in jesus name may the love of the father flow because it's first that god loved us first and now we love him back and we love others back and i have an amen amen before we continue on, I want to just first of all, I don't know if some of you know that there's testimonies online. How many of you have been enjoying all those testimonies online? Give me a beep. There's been different testimonies online, and if you haven't seen them, they're on Good News, a Good News page, but they're also, if you want to see even more and more, because I didn't necessarily get to share them all, but they're also on uh, John, is it walking free dot, uh, uh, in Facebook? Is it just walking free? On John Edwards walking free, you'll see more and more testimonies, not only of the past, but right now in Cork City, and then also as, he's, as they're touring Ireland, more and more testimonies of what Jesus is doing, because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I want to do, I just want to give thanks to God for the team that came down. You know, they came down, they want to share the gospel in Cork. Uh, first of all, I want to thank God for, uh, we had Dermot here last week, encouraging us last week, but Dermot came down. He was from Kerry. He's part of working with John Edwards on this, but I want to thank God for Dermot, first of all. Can I have it a beep and then amen? <laughs> Sean, come here, Sean. I won't remember everybody's name. Sean, can I get you? Sean. I want to thank God. Sean, Sean has a, a, a group of guys down from Dublin. Forgive me, guys, if I don't get everybody's name. There's John. I can see John over there. I can also, I think Bernard is in the car there. Uh, there was Nathan. And uh, I, might remember, I might forget somebody's name. Who else was there? I want to thank God anyway for them, for the guys from Dublin and those, Nathan, I don't, I think, I don't think he's from Dublin, I don't know where Nathan's from, Tullamore, Nathan from Tullamore, I want to thank God for the guys who came down to go on the streets and to evangelize and to reach out to others, can I have a beeping, can I have a beep beep, and of course I want to thank John Edwards and he'll be speaking, but we'll, we'll do that in a minute, and I will just thank him for his life and, and leadership and helping people to get going on the street. He's an absolute evangelist. He's not only an evangelist who wants to reach out to people, he sees the big picture and he catches the big picture. And that's why I, I really enjoy John because he's an evangelist who grasps it and he also raises up, you know, he raises up, he gets fire into people to evangelize. And lastly, also I want to talk to Jillian because Jillian was, a, Jillian was hosting the team all week and so just a blessing on Jillian. Can you have an amen for Jillian there? Amen. <laughs> So with that, guys, right now, right now, would you pray for somebody right now that needs the gospel? Come on. Somebody that right now needs the gospel, would you just pray for them right now? Think of somebody's name. Think of somebody's name that you need to pray for. Somebody who you work with, somebody in your family. You praying for them? You got them, pray for them right now. And now I'm going to say something. Now that you've prayed for them, do you love them and care enough 
that you'll actually go talk to them? Do you love them and that you care enough? Those of you who listen on YouTube, those of you listening on Facebook, do you love them and care enough that you go talk to them about the gospel? I'm sorry if I kind of caught you there, but I deliberately wanted to catch you. Do you love them enough that they might reject you? They might misunderstand you? Do you love them enough that you'll actually overcome that misunderstanding, that rejection? Or else they might actually come to Christ and you might have the joy of seeing them come to salvation as you pray with them. Do you love them enough not just to pray, but to actually dare to go and share? So I want to challenge you, that person you were praying for, that person you prayed for right now, don't ask just that somebody else goes. Ask, Lord, how can I go? Can I have an amen? Amen. 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 You all know this next one. I want to bring some joy. Those of you on Facebook listening in, you were made to worship God. You were made to gather to worship Him. And we say to all the church in, in Cork, we say to all the church in Ireland, we say to all the people of God right now in the name of Jesus, we say, Spirit of Pharaoh, get your hands off. Let my people go that they may worship me.
was made to worship him all of my days until he Those of you who tuned in on Facebook and YouTube, we're so glad you're with us. Those of you in Car Park Church, we're going to be, you know, by God's grace, next week we're going to be here again. I just want one or two notices, though. Uh, we may be going for water baptism next week or the week after that. We have six people ready for water baptism. Hey, hey. Can I have an amen? There's, well, we have six people at the moment who are going for water baptism. So uh, we want to declare, we want to celebrate that with them. Amen. We want to work out a way to do that. At the same time, obeying the laws about social distancing and so forth as best as we can, as best as we can. And we want to, but at the same time, we believe that salvation in Jesus is more important. So we'll always be trying to push the envelope as far as we can. And but we're going for water baptism. I also want to thank God for someone who's who's uh, been looking to get to England to go to a certain uh, continue her journey in discipleship and being course. So we bless God for Shuan. She's going. She's been accepted to go to England. Yeah. To continue our journey, continue our journey. We're all on a journey, amen. And so, likewise, I just want to tell you, the church, we're going to do all our best, we, everything we can. There's new new rules being put in place about you know the social distancing, new rules. Hey, soon we'll all, some of us will be able to get haircuts. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I'm getting a bit messy now, you know. Going for it. I know. I see some some people that pushed the envelope and got some haircuts somewhere. I don't know where, as ever. Well, you know, the rules are changing a little bit. And so we bless that God will just help us to use ways in different ways. You know, we looked at the haven. I want to tell you, we're looking at the haven. There's going to be difficulties there. The haven is small. We were doing two of our services in the haven. We were doing our 1230 service. And we we're doing our 7 p.m. service in the haven. But it's, it's very tight there at the moment. I'm speaking to the management there about possibilities. But I'll let you know. We will let you know if that's possible. But we're just trying to find different ways. Again, we have to talk to the we have to talk to the people in Cove because at the moment we're or we're not in our own building, but even still, we have to talk to the people in Cove because we need to make sure we have all the rules kept and that they are able to bring us. But we will let you know, and we bless all the small churches, particularly that are struggling right now to find ways to do it, and yet at the same time, you know, obey, keep people safe. You know, I I just watched the YouTube. Some of our churches are all over the world, so I find out what's going on around the world. And I watched a YouTube picture actually of another church just in, in Italy right now where a pastor just walked into his church and on every seat where somebody died, this is in Italy, and every seat where somebody died, there was a picture placed of that family or those people. Half the church was covered with pictures. Now, I don't know where you are with all this coronavirus business and everything. I know some people think it's fake altogether, and some people think they're so nervous they won't go outside the door, and there's people in between. But I want to tell you, when I see, when I see a pastor going through his church crying over how many people died in his church, half of his church. So I don't know what happened there, but this is in Italy. We want to keep people safe, but at the same time, we want to declare Jesus. Amen? We want to do everything we can and, and do all that. We also, some people are, you know, we want to make sure that those who are fearful as well in the world, that we don't, you know, that's why we have Car Park Church at the moment. We want to make sure that people in the world know that the church is responsible. We're not silly. But at the same time, we want to make sure that we can do everything we can to declare the name of Jesus and bring Jesus to people and try and find that wisdom. Can I have an amen? So... I will tell you, as soon as we can do different things, we will do it. We will push the envelope while still trying to manage other people's fears as well. Because what might be freedom to you can be bondage to somebody else. If meat is a bondage to somebody else, well then I won't eat meat. You know the scripture? You know the scripture? 
I won't let my freedom bind somebody else up. Okay, we gotta show love and respect, even for people who are very fearful. And then at the same time, we gotta push the envelope as far as we can push it. So we try and find that wisdom, that happy place. And by God's grace, we will do. Can you pray that we will do that? That we'll find that happy place in God? Now, with that in mind, I will let you know what's going on. So we bless all the churches that are doing that. Now, for baptism, I want to tell you, if anybody else wants to get baptized, come and speak to us. We want to have a celebration baptism. We want to celebrate your new life in Christ. We want to do it as a church body. Do it together and raise up the name of Jesus and have a right party. When you want, won't, don't we want to celebrate somebody's birthday and have a party together? Amen? So if you want to be baptized, let us know ASAP because we're going for that very soon. And so we want to bless you. Can I have John Edwards up here, please? Can I have a hand clap and a beat for John Edwards and Walking Free Ministries? Yahoo! Amen. You know, I, I got to know John. I got to know John uh, a number of years ago. I was actually invited by a Baptist pastor in Middleton. And he, what was the pastor's name, Michael? The pastor that you had? Years ago. Sean Mullins. Sean Mullins. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's right. You know now, yeah. yeah. So many years ago, I don't know whether it was, um, it was around 94, 95, something like that. I, don't, I, don't, I can't remember when. And that's when, or 93, I can't remember when uh, exactly. And I, I was, they told me about this guy who, who goes around Ireland carrying a cross and praying for people. And at first I was thinking, oh, you know, is this some religious dude? <laughs> I thought it was some religious dude carrying a cross, you know. He wants to pay for the sins of the world or something. And then I meet John Edwards. <laughs> and John just said, you know, straight away he's just on fire about reaching people for Jesus. Amen? Just on fire. And so I've been blessed and I've grown to know John over the years. And, and then John uh, came down for Fiona's wedding. And I got to know with Fiona and, and Jay Fallon's wedding and I got to know John a little bit more. And then over the years, we, we haven't you know, seen each other every year, but every now and again we've come across paths. And I'm so glad that we've had John speak in our church a number of times and we've had him at Fireland. And, you know, he's an evangelist with a heart and love for people and, and particularly seeing people set free. And so walk is, but you know, particularly in those areas as well, because John has such a heart for people who are caught up and bound up in that way to set them free. And, so look into Walking Free Ministries, Google it, find it, you find stuff, he, he'll tell you himself. And uh, John has an anointing to bring people free that way and a fire in his belly for that. And so I thank God for his life. He's 32 years in ministry now, I just heard on Facebook last night. 32 years in ministry. And uh, I just thank God for his life. And John is going to share the gospel with us today. And as well as that, I want to tell you, we are going to push the envelope a little bit. Okay, you okay with this? Those of you on Facebook, please understand me. Those on YouTube, those of you listening in from around the world, we're going to push the envelope a little bit. Is it, we're going to do this. If somebody, if somebody wants prayer, John will pray with you at the end of the service. Now, I will tell you that, you know, you can keep your social distancing. If, if you're, you know, you can keep your, we have two cones out there. You can keep, line up, keep social distancing. John will pray with you. And he, will, he might be standing a little bit awkwardly to the side a little bit. That's okay. He just wants to help you and bless you. And then also, you know, we have hand sanitizer here and we have stuff like that. But we're going to push the envelope. So just like a doctor coming to a doctor's office, we're going to be careful. But at the same time, we want you to be prayed with. If you need prayer, we want you to be prayed with. We want John to be able to minister to your life. So we will provide that at the end and, and just know there in the front, okay? But John is going to bring a message and let you know the truth sets you free. Amen? The truth sets you free. YouTube, the truth sets you free. Facebook, the truth sets you free. So, John, we welcome John Edwards one more time. Come on. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you all here in Cork. Thanks for the great welcome that we had down here. We've been on the streets in Cork with the team from around the country. And we've seen God do amazing things. We have our prison cell down here with us. So we were out in the streets uh, in Cork City yesterday and the day before. And we saw many, many people give their hearts to Jesus. People, there was a guy committed to prison cell yesterday. He just got out of prison last week, actual prison. But he stepped into our prison cell yesterday. 
and he sat in the seat and myself and Dermot spoke to him and we prayed with him and he gave his heart to Jesus inside a prison cell declaring himself free from sin, free from his past. Isn't that amazing? And he just left prison last week. So that's what I saw when I thought about the prison cell. I thought if I do this, I can picture prisoners coming into it and being set free inside the prison cell. With the same idea, some of you remember when I had the big syringe. I had the big, the 33 foot long syringe. And it was a um, Holy Ghost is coming, there's a wind coming. And uh, I had drug addicts and drug dealers inside my big syringe and they sat in the syringe giving their hearts to Jesus and uh, filling in application forms to go to rehabilitation centres so they could be free, free, set free from drugs. Isn't that amazing? So thank you Good News Church for working with us. Thank you for inviting us down even though the church, is, church buildings are physically not open. And praise God for Tom, Pastor Tom and Sam who have stepped out to do Car Park Church. I don't know, really know anybody else in the Republic of Ireland who's doing this. I might be wrong, but they've stepped out and it's a privilege to be on the car park here speaking with you today. Many of you who know me, you know I come from a background of drug and alcohol addiction. 24 years of addiction. Now I'm clean and sober 30 years, and um, which, is a, which is a miracle really. I'm married, I've got a beautiful wife, four stepkids and four grandbabies. And we traveled all over the planet preaching the gospel and seeing thousands of people give their hearts to Jesus as we travel. It's just amazing. I want to preach a message to you this morning. It's Father's Day today. I want to preach a message that I'm calling, I am not my father. You know, because I was a drug addict and alcoholic for all those years, I've had a liver transplant. I've had cancer a couple of times and hep C. And I'm completely healed of all these things now. But I remember growing up with my father. My father was a high-powered businessman, but he was a very angry man. And I know we're meant to honor, as a church, we're meant to honor our father and mother, and I do honor my dad. But I've got to be honest as well. He was an angry man. He was like a sergeant major. He was an alcoholic, even though, you know, um, he was tough on me, and I had a, a bad relationship with him, and we'd fight a lot. Even when I became an adult, I'd fight with my father, and sometimes physically fight with him, and I regret those things now, but that's the way it was back then. And when I became a Christian 32 years ago, you know, when I called out to God and asked him to help me, a miracle happened in my life and I got set free from my addiction. I began to think about my father. And before I go any further, I want to read a scripture. Because this is so important to me, this particular scripture. I think of Jesus in John 5, 19. Jesus said, he said, even the son does nothing of himself, but he said, I only do what I see my father doing. And here's an example of a son having a great relationship with his father. And I found, I wondered how my relationship would be with Father God. You see, a lot of Christians got a hold of me and they began to tell me that I couldn't have a good relationship with Father God because of the relationship I had with my father. Now, personally, this is my story. I'm not dictating this to anybody else, but I didn't agree with that. I believe God's bigger than that. I believe that God is able to reveal himself to me. And I said to these Christian counselors that said this to me, I said to them, I said, what about John chapter 14, verse 21? And they were surprised that I knew the scriptures, even though I was a fairly new Christian, because I read the New Testament over and over and over and over again when I got saved. And I found this scripture. John 14, 21 says, He who has my commands and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him. And I will manifest myself to him. Then it says in the next verse, Hang on. I'm not used to preaching in the wind. Then it says in the next verse, Jesus, uh, Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, he said, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him. And we will come to him, and we will make our home with him. So here is two verses of scripture that is telling me that if I love God and if I obey him, that he will reveal himself to me. 
<laughs> this is great. <laughs> Stuff's taking off around me here. So God will reveal himself. God, my Father, will reveal himself to me. And I began to think about my life. And when I got married uh, 23 years ago to Tricia, my beautiful wife, when I got married to her, she had four children. So I was single for 42 years. Then overnight there were six of us, right? That was more traumatic than coming off heroin, having a family overnight, right? A full family. But I found myself when I was with my wife, I found myself sometimes I was like my father. Sometimes I displayed the impatience and the anger that my dad had. I used to hate the way my father spoke to my mother. I used to hate the way he spoke to us sometimes. I used to hate the way he was at work all the time and he wasn't at home enough with us. And I found myself just being like my dad, talking to my wife in a way that I should never have spoken to her. And I recognized, I thought, oh my word, I am like my father. And I thought, I don't want to be like my father in those things. So I, I began to pray and fast and ask God to change those things within me. I remember reading in Isaiah 53 that it says that Jesus died for our iniquities. Iniquities is what travels to the bloodlines to our ancestors and our fathers and our grandfathers. And Jesus died to break the power of our iniquities. So the similarities that we have to the negative things in our father, we want to get rid of them. So I began to pray and ask God to deal with me. And God faithfully dealt with me, and little by little, and I have to keep an eye on myself, but God dealt with me and the anger and the impatience that I had that because monkey see, monkey do. I did what I saw my father doing and I learned by it. And don't be surprised if you were a little bit like your father or your mother and you'll have some of the traits that they had. And I think that we need to examine ourselves and look at ourselves deeply and go to God on our knees and ask God to develop and to, and to, um, uh, to change those things within us that we're not happy with. But then as I went on on my journey, I began to notice some other things in my life. When I wrote my book, which is called Walking Free, when I wrote my book, I went back and I realized, do you know something? It's very easy to look back in our past and notice the negative things, because they're really obvious. And the things I've mentioned already can be really obvious. And society these days so easily becomes a victim of what happened to them in the past. And I see a lot of that going on in the world today. Too far, far too much of it going on. We have a responsibility in our lives to be victorious. God won't make us victorious or he won't make us more than conquerors just because it says it in the word of God. There's a personal responsibility that we have to become the people that we're meant to be. I heard my old pastor, Paul Scanlon, saying once, he said, the hardest thing in the world to do is to be yourself. And many, many people are living this life not truly reflecting who they are because they've never really looked in the mirror and realized I am at last the person that I am meant to be. And uh, we become an image of maybe heroes that we admire. We become an image of maybe people who inspire us. We become an image of maybe a bit of our mother, a bit of our father, a bit of our siblings or our aunties and uncles. And a lot of people never truly find out who they are. To be who you are, you need to pay a price. But I found great healing when I wrote my book, Walking Free. I remember one time when my dad, when he was in St. John of God's Hospital up in Dublin in Still Organ, he was detoxing up booze. Now my father was one of the 20 highest salaried paid men in Ireland at one time. I admired him as a businessman. He was an intellectual guy, he studied himself, and I admired his tenacity, that strength that he has to press through anything. And I began to take on board some of the positive things my dad had as well. And I remember one time, you even as a six and seven year old kid, I didn't want to be like that. And that's why I declare I am not my father. But some parts of my dad's traits I admire. And I'm happy to say that I honor my dad with the, some of the things that he put into me. And it's important that we don't write off our parents because of some of the negative things from our pasts. I remember when he was in this hospital and out the back of the hospital, there was a big croquet pitch. Do you know what croquet is? With a big hammer, you play it, the ball. And I was only maybe six or seven or eight. I was very young. And my dad was trying to play it with me. My dad never hugged. He never said, we love you. But back then, parents didn't do that anyway. But I knew he loved me. I was secure in the fact he loved me, even though he never told me. 
Sometimes, you know, it's so easy to take on trauma that's not trauma at all because our fathers, our mothers didn't say they love us. You know, we need to snap out of it. We need to wake up and become real people and understand we were loved by our mums and dads. And I remember one day he, he said, come on, John, I'll show you how to play croquet. And even though he never hugged me, this memory came back to me. He came around behind me and my father leant over me and he held the croquet, whatever, the mallet I think it's called. He held the croquet mallet. And I can remember my dad's face rubbing against my cheek. He hadn't shaved that day and I can remember it distinctly. It was a lovely feeling. It was a beautiful feeling, my dad being so close to me. And I can remember the smell of my father. It was a mixture of brigantine hair oil. <laughs> I don't think they made that anymore. And pipe tobacco. And I can smell me dad. And it's a, it brings back even more memories. And if I didn't stay strong right this second, I'd probably cry. Because I remember that my father loved me. And when he held the mallet around me, and he held it and he showed me how to play it, he, he, st he stayed there too long. And I knew, I thought, my God, my dad's hugging me. It was like a sneaky hug that he was doing to me. My dad, if we look into our past, into our parents and our relationship with them, you don't find these secret displays of love on the surface of our life. We've got to dig to find diamonds. You're not going to find a diamond over there in the corner of the car park. You're not going to find a golden nugget over there or, a, or an engagement ring unless somebody loses it. You know, you're not going to find something like that. You've got to dig to find diamonds. You've got to dig to find gold. And so often the answer to our problem is not about going to counsellors or psychiatrists or some kind of therapist. It's about going into our past and going past the negative things that we see. It's going past the obvious trauma that was there and digging deeper into our lives and remembering the moments where our mums and our dads and our, and our siblings showed us love. It's there if you're just to make a decision to dig for it. Get your journal and don't be just writing the surface things that are obvious, that are hurt us. Don't be just writing the rejection. Don't be just writing about the, I've been sexually abused, I've been physically abused, I've been mentally abused. But I came before God Almighty. I thank God for my counsellor. I was the first Irish guy to do the Teen Challenge program in Wales. I thank God for my Welsh counsellor. He said, when I, when it was time for me to deal with my sexual abuse, it wasn't by my family, it was somebody outside my family. And when it was time to talk about it, I said, I want to talk about abuse that happened to me. And my Welsh counsellor said, John, he said, before you speak to me, he said, go up into your room and find the counsellor, the Holy Ghost, and he'll reveal the Father to you. And I got my knees in my bedroom and I spoke the whole thing out with the Holy Spirit. And I said, God, I can't see you. I can't necessarily feel you, but I'm obedient to your word. I'm casting my anxieties upon you. I'm casting my cares upon you according to your word. And my Father, God in heaven, revealed himself to me. And within minutes, I was healed of the abuse that happened to me. And when I came down to speak to my counselor, his name was Gareth Cheedy. He said, how are you? He said, did you find, Holy? he was a Welsh man. He called it Holy Spirit. Did you find Holy Spirit? I said, I did, Gareth. And he revealed the Father to me. And I can tell you that I've already been set free from the abuse. It just took minutes as I pressed into God. And he's liberated and set me free. Hallelujah. And I can tell you from that moment, I've been set free from it. It's called a personal relationship with Jesus. Come on, hallelujah. Oh, this is a new experience for me. Come on, beat those horns. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> All right, shut up. <laughs> you know, uh, God revealed himself to me we're having a bit of fun here this morning it's great but you know this is my testimony I've not been set free to some therapist I remember sitting outside a therapist's office one day and I thank God for them because we need to talk we need talk therapy I thank God for these people but this is just my journey I'm telling you about I remember sitting out at a therapist's office one day and the word therapist was on the window of the office. And I'm taking my, I'm going into another therapist. And I looked at the word therapist. And if you break it up, it says the rapist. And I thought, <laughs> I'm not, some of these are incredible people. But be careful who you go to to talk about your past. Don't let them dig up the dirt and the mud and the mire if they're not going to balance it with the healthy things that happened to us or our mums and our dads. 
Because if we just dig up the mud and the mire, we get a twisted view of our past and we we'll suffer from the trauma instead of finding the balance of the blessings that our moms. And I remember going to, my father used to rent a house on Loch Ree, on a place called Hare Island. A big old bungalow. We'd stay there for a month as my whole family, four sisters and two brothers. We had the whole island to ourselves. My dad could afford to do that. And the big old bungalow, there was no electricity. And at night time, my mother and father, they'd be drinking loads and he, because they were, he was an alcoholic. They'd be drinking loads. But I remember my mother sitting on my father's knee and them singing old Irish songs, harmonizing with each other. And it brings back memories of joy. And I can weep as I talk about it even now, seeing my mom on my, my mother on my father's knee singing these gorgeous Irish songs. And then my father would get up in the hard floor in the big bay window in the old bungalow. And my, and my father, my mom would sing, hitting it kind of a thing like a drum. My dad would top dance in the window. These are the memories to get back from our past, to bring into focus that we not just see the trauma. And in that way, we honor our mother and father. And God promises, he says, if you honor your mother and your father, it'll go well with you. I promise you, I'm not putting down counselors and people like that, but be careful the ones you go to. So many go in with a shovel to dig up the past. And I've had people in my home, I've detoxed hundreds of drug addicts. I've had murderers, all kinds of people in my home, leading them to Jesus Christ. And I, often they've been screwed up to people they've gone who've dug up all the stuff and the sin and the stuff they've done. And I live in Yorkshire now in England, and we walk up over the Yorkshire Moors and I talk to them about the blood of the Jesus, of Jesus, I talked to them about our father loved us so much, he sent his only son, and we're walking across the moor, and they said, do you really mean that Father God wants to forgive me? I said, yes. And they said, well, with the religion I was brought up, I'm terrified of Father God. I said, you have a wrong image of Father, that's religion you're talking about. I'm talking about a personal relationship with Jesus, and if you, if you do his word, he will reveal himself to you. And I've been with people who've been in all kinds of horrible backgrounds, weeping, walking over the Yorkshire Moors, or sitting in my living room, weeping as a revelation of God comes upon them, as he liberates them from their past. My friends, we are not our fathers. We are made in the image of Almighty God. And the character that we have is born out of the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and long-suffering. That's the Holy Ghost that lives inside of us. We are dressed in the fullness of God. And many of us, we need to repent and change our way of... The word repent means change our way of thinking. It's not that holy, you know, God-bashing word that you hear from hundreds of years ago. The word repent means you're going to turn your life around and walk in the opposite direction. It means we're going to change our way of thinking. It means that we're going to take captive every thought and we're going to make it obedient to a higher rule for living, the Word of God. And any thoughts or actions or any attitudes, an attitude is a, is a pattern of thinking. Sorry, an attitude is a group of thoughts important that we develop a way of thinking that will be a blessing to us because the battle is in the mind. And I'm going to be praying with people here today. I'm going to be praying with people here today that we'll be set free from that battle and you'll have a revelation by the Spirit of God who will come into you. Your eyes will be open, not just that you will see God clearer, not just that you will see your future better and be more focused, but as you look over your shoulder at your past, you will see a past that is littered with diamonds and gold and blessings that come directly from your Father who loved you. And as Christians, we lead the way for the world in showing that we are complete, we are made whole in Christ, that the old is gone, the new has come. In fact, we are new creations in Christ Jesus. We have been set free from the past. My word is such a revelation. But there's a movement came into the church maybe 30 odd years ago, maybe 40 years ago, but it was in, it was in the church when I got born again. And the movement, was a deep counseling thing. It had some great elements in it, but it also brought in it some things that caused us to focus on trauma. It caused us to bring up new words, like um, new words in counseling. And we would talk about ourselves like we're a victim of this, and we're a victim of that. 
and we begin to make declarations over our life that are not that are not mirrored in the Word of God. I am not in recovery, for example. I was a drug addict for 24 years. I am not in recovery. I am a recovered drug addict because Jesus Christ has set me free. I am not. I've had a liver transplant. I'll never forget when I had my liver transplant. I used to be a marathon runner before that. And all the doctors are saying, you'll never run a marathon again. You'll never be a champion of sport again. I said, in the name of Jesus, get behind me, Satan. You have in mind the things of man and not the things of God. And in the hospital, Trisha, my wife, pulled down the computer in front of me. And we looked for a sport that transplant people can take part in. And I found something called the Irish National Transplant Games. And while I was in high dependency after my liver transplant, I wrote to them and said, can I run in the Irish National Games? And they wrote back to me and said, no, you can't, Mr. Edwards. So I replied and said, why not? I've had a liver transplant. And they said, Mr. Edwards, nobody has ever asked to run in the National Games three days after a liver transplant. I said, I'm not just anybody. I said, I'm a Christian. I said, I believe that God's going to heal me. And I said, I believe I can be a champion. My friends, there's a champion in every single one of you. But it's your responsibility to pull it out. It's your responsibility to get a vision of your future that you can live a life that will make you into that champion. So I wrote back to them again and I said, listen, I said, I've had a liver transplant. And I know I used to be a drug addict, but I'm completely clean now. For it. And I said, I want to run in the games. So they had a special meeting about me. And they told me that if my, if my surgeon said I could run in the games a few months later, they'd let me run. So that's what pulled me out of my wheelchair. That's what pulled me out of being a cripple after my operation. That's what got me walking again. I can remember getting up and walking from my bed. The nurse wanted to help me. I said, no nurse, you're not going to help me. I've got to do this myself. I'm not going to walk with the help of other people. And I walked from my bed to the shower. And I took my first shower after the liver transplant. I remember, you know, those of you who know me, I walked across America with a big cross. I remember when I got into the shower, I said to myself, man, that walk was tougher than walking across America. It took everything within me to get back in my feet again. That's the type of effort it takes to become the man or woman of God that he wants us to be. And then I began to walk around the hospital wards. Then when I came out of the hospital, I began to walk in the field and I began to trot a little bit. Then I began to run. And eight months later, I, I took part in the Irish National Transplant Games. And guess what? I became the Irish champion in the 1500 meters, the 800 meters, and the 400 meters. Now, I don't say that to blow my own trumpet. I don't say that to blow my own trumpet. When God helps those who stand up on the inside and say, I am not going to be a consequence of what life has done to me. I'm not going to let life happen to me anymore. No, I am going to happen to life. So whatever has happened to you, whatever has happened to you tonight or today, let us honor our mothers and fathers that it will go well with us. And I'm going to finish now with an illustration. I heard, excuse me a minute. I heard this story a few years ago about a, a market town in England. And this famous tightrope walker came along. And he said, I'm coming down next Saturday. I'm going to walk from the top of that building over there to that building 200 feet away over there on a tightrope. And he said to all the market people, he said, do you believe I can do it? And they said, yes, we believe you can do it. He said, why do you believe? Oh, he said, sir, we, we've heard of your reputation as a tightrope walker. He said, okay, tell all your friends to come down next Saturday and we'll walk the walk. So next Saturday came along, hundreds of people were in the market and the man climbed up on the roof and there's all the people down the market are looking up at him like this. And he shouts down and says, do you still believe I can walk across here? And all the people shouted and said, yes, mister. We believe that you can do it. And the man said, he said, okay, if you believe, one of you come up here and get my back and walk across with me. And they said, oh, we believe you, mister, but we don't believe you that much. <laughs> Suddenly, out of the crowd of people, a little boy, nine-year-old boy said, I believe you, mister. I'll get up and do it with you. And it reminds me when Jesus said, we need to be like little children as we approach him. And to the shame of the adults, 
who were declaring a bravery that they didn't have at all. The little boy climbed up on the roof of the building and got on the man's back. And now you can hear a pin drop in the crowd. And some of the people began to pray as the man began to walk out like 200 feet up in the air with the little boy on his back. You could hear a pin drop. And when they got to the far side, 200 feet, there was a great cheer as they got to a place of safety. And they came down off the building. And somebody, they were congratulating them. Well done, that was amazing. And somebody asked the little boy, how is it, he said, that you trusted that man to take you across the 200 feet? And the little boy said, that man's my father. That man's my daddy. If you don't have a relationship with Father God, I want to pray for you this morning. And I want you to imagine a, a tightrope up there high in the sky. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, 6, it says we are raised up and seated in heavenly places with Christ at the right hand of the Father. I want you today to see yourself in that place. We are raised up and seated in heavenly places. That's all very fine to know that we're there positionally. But we need to be living that life in our experience if we're going to see a move of God in this land. And I believe that God is doing a new thing in this country. We're having car park meetings never seen before that I can ever remember. We've all been surprised by this virus, virus that's come into our country. But I declare to you that this is not just bad news. I declare that God is doing a new thing in the land. He's raising up the evangelists and the prophets and the pastors and the teachers. He's raising up the people. He's raising up the people that don't just look at the past and see the trauma and the brokenness and the hiccups and the brokenness. He's raising up people that will see their father who's called them and say, come up here, my son, and I will show you things that is to come. Get up my back, son, and I'll take you, and my daughter, I'll take you to places that you've never dreamt that you'd see. You'll see thousands of people getting saved. You'll see our car park churches packed out with people. This car park won't be big enough to pull the people in. And in the name of Jesus, I declare over every single one of you, I declare a new day. I declare breakthrough of your life. I bind you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. I'm still pretty fit. You know, it's going to take a lot more than liver transplant or some pesky little virus going to knock John Edwards out. And I declare the same over your lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so can I have one of them, um, yep. little, yep. down here? One of those things, yeah. Sure. Put it there, right? Okay, guys, for prayer, would you go on that side and line up on that side if you want to? I've got disinfectant on, alright? pray for my brother in the name of Jesus. Lord, this man is an evangelist, and I declare a new day over him. I pray an impartation, God, of evangelism into this man, that he see a new day of victory, a new day of overcoming in his life. Lord, that the prophetic will begin to work through him like never before, that the miraculous will work through these hands, that the sick will be healed, Lord, that these feet will take him to places he's never been in before, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare a new day, a day of miracles. A day While of John was praying with people, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father. I'm going to turn Amen. the sound down a little bit because I don't want John to be, I want him to be able to pray with people properly. 
So we're going to turn the sound down a little bit so he's not blowing out of it while, while we're praying. But can we worship God together? Yes. We're going to still sing a song of praise. And those of you on YouTube and those of you on Facebook, please know that the camera went flying in the wind. So I hope you're still tuned in. I hope you're able to still see us. But we're just going to sing lightly some songs of worship together as we close out today. Have you been blessed today? Beep. Say amen. Have you been blessed today? God wants to show his love to you. And in that, resting in that, you begin to show love to him and love to others. And that's the way it is. That's where it's really at. Really taking a hold of that. Amen. And we bless and also pray for those who are being prayed with right now as we worship as well. That you join in with John in prayer and agree with God. Agree with John. Agree with the Lord Jesus. Be in agreement that whoever's being prayed for will come into the fullness of whatever it is they need right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Stay tuned as we worship. Just what we need. 
on Facebook. I still hope you're still hearing us. I know the picture's coming up. I hope you can still hear us because the camera went flying and everything. But it's just good to praise Jesus. Those of you who are pastors right now, those of your leaders in other churches, if you can't meet in your church building, consider Car Park Church. Contact me and I'll tell you how we get the system set up and we will help you get your Car Park Church off the ground. We want to bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. One more time, we praise the name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to, last song, we're going to just raise up the roof. It's just a simple song of raising the name of Jesus. Are you ready? Let's go. Lift Jesus higher, higher and higher. Lift him up for the world to see. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I would go men unto me. Lift Jesus higher, higher and higher. Lift him up.
you on Facebook. Rain is coming down. We have to go lashing down. God bless you. Thank God for John Edwards. Thank God for the church, the Kerr Park Church, by God's grace, next week, 11 p.m. here in Cork City.